And we are going. What's going on with everybody? It is your boy, Eric, aka Young God, coming to you live in the in the green dungeon, giving it to you real raw rugged. And I got some on the other line. I'm gonna let him introduce himself, man. Who we got here today? I am Big Baby Gucci. What's good, my boy? Hey man, nothing, man. How you doing today? I'm good, dog. I'm living. I'm here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, are those the uh what is it? The the iPod Max or not the iPod, but the Oh iPod. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Max is here. Yeah. Are mm -hmm. they? Are they worth the money? Pretty much, yeah. Really? You know, I haven't had any problem. I haven't for a couple of years now. What's the difference between those? I mean, obviously, they're bigger and they probably sound better. What's the difference between those and, like, regular AirPods? Um, well, yeah, they're the bigger ones. The sound, noise cancellation, the accessibility, the um, uh, they're more comfortable wearing for an extended amount of time other than the in-ear, so you can wear it about five, six hours. And they last, the battery lasts a long time. You know, and it's just easy to use. Pick them up, they come on, put them down, they turn off. You know, I've got a button, I can hear everything around me. Or I can hear nothing to know, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, they got the noise cancellations, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's a button that you can hear through it or not. All right, so, it's all right. They fire. Got you, got you. All right, well, let me, let me take a step back and talk about how I even discovered who you was. So, mm -hmm. are you familiar with the website called KTT? Um, is that Kanye Tilda? That is Kanye Tilda. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, them niggas over there, I swear I've seen at least like a, I've, seen, I've seen at least 40 big baby Gucci threads on KTT from my time mm -hmm. on KTT. And I never clicked on them. It, it wasn't, I, I never heard your music. I never knew anything about mm -hmm. you. I just yeah. never clicked on it. So at that time, I had never knew what your music sounded like. Fast mm -hmm. forward to just recently, your people reach out and say, hey, you want, you want an interview, bro? I'm like, I've seen this nigga name a thousand times. Let me <laughs> get this nigga music a listen at this point. Mm -hmm. I was asleep. I've been, right. I've been asleep. You, you, you know what's my yeah. initial takeaway from your music? Mm -hmm. This nigga music sounds expensive. <laughs> Your music, I'm like, I don't know what this nigga budget is. This nigga's like he spent a, a million dollars spent making these albums. Like they sound so expensive. Is that on purpose? Like, do you do you know that? Do you realize that? Nah, hell no. I mean, I guess I don't know. I guess the intricacy is it of it kind of equates to the same thing. I guess it sounds expensive because I spend a amount of time as I do. So I guess it's expensive as in time. You feel me? Yeah, I, I think to so. me. I think it threw me off because I just wasn't, I didn't know what to expect. I thought you were going to sound like something else. I thought you were going to mm. sound like something I didn't like. That's why I never listened to you. So yeah. I'm like, because the people I would see you group with, it. the people I would see you group with on KTT, I'm like, well, I won't listen to that nigga because I don't listen to these <laughs> niggas. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah, I feel you. Just from being a, a music lover, I definitely understand. Exactly. I'm not about to. It, it, it's like if a nigga grouped V's with, just somebody that sounds nothing like these. And you're like, mm -hmm. I don't listen to that. I don't listen to that nigga. Yeah. Listen to these, and you're like, damn. Just think of these. Exactly. That's all right now. Yeah. Listening to you, I think what, what stands out is that you have so many different sounds. Because I'll hear you just straight rapping on a song. And then mm -hmm. you'll make something like Instagram where you're, uh, funny music, I don't even tweet. I really tweet. <laughs> like that song oh, is beautiful to me. You know what I'm saying? So... Mm -hmm. Going in making music, is that a like um is that a conscious effort to like try different sounds or is it just the mood you're in at the time? Um honestly it won't even be the mood because in a session with me, we'll cook up like six, seven songs and two of them might be one style, this one to be that style, and and that's gonna be that style. So it's really just, you know, I, I, I just feel so comfortable in any genre, honestly. That's the only thing I can think of it because I don't know. I just feel like if the beat's good and I feel something on it, if I can automatically hear a melody, then I can I can make a song to it. It's interesting. Yeah. Like something like Captain Crash Out sounds nothing like Instagram at all. Like those songs are polar opposite. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah. it is are you more comfortable with one sound over the other or are you equally comfortable with both of those sounds? Um, I mean, at this point I um I'm comfortable with both. But which I am more inclined to do, and I feel like I do more well, is the more relaxed shit. Mm. Or sometimes the more synthy Travis Scott shit that people love, because I can show my range. But it really just depends on what you like. But for me, 
like shit like Instagram and shit that I like to do. But that's 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 it's simple. It's easy. I I love R and B. I'm a instrumental level lover. I love you know I love listening to jazz. I love all types of. So it's like there's more into it than just you know all the I fuck with the Captain Crash on music, but it's really just it's like me screaming in your face. You know, I like you know it's I feel like he's sometimes the slowest shit get my point off across easier. Is it a sample at at the start of Instagram or is that somebody singing? Was it? Yeah, no, it's a sample. Is um, I think he sampled uh, and flipped um, Drake "Summers Over" in the loop. Ah, that's the um. I think that's uh, mm -hmm. what's their name? That's uh, Majid Jordan. I think that's her name is um. Mm -hmm. That song right there. Uh, not. Yep. I didn't realize I was that. I, was I that. fuck with Majid. They're hard. Yeah, no, they're tough. I used to listen to them a lot. No, they are hard. Because, I mean, I I hear you say that you have like R and B, like you like R and B. Or is is there anything? Oh, yeah. Is there any, anything right now that's catching your ear within like the R and B realm? Mm, I've been listening to Capella, Capella Gray. My boy Brian, my boy Brian Barnes, he just dropped his uh his EP, and he just exploded. He's he's like at three million. He's on my album. He got like three million monthly. Put up like twenty, thirty million streams in like two weeks with his, his first EP and um he's an incredible singer. He sounds kinda like Gideon, but he's he's like he could he has more range and he could um kind of better songwriter in my opinion. But he's fire. He's fire. Brian Barnes, Capella Gray. That's a lot. It's um of course Brian Baez. Um yeah, really. Right now as the singers, but rappers you know, I got a couple other rappers, but as a singer, it's all about me fucking with a little bit. Not that this person only makes R and B music because they don't, but uh, definitely produced for a lot of R and B people. You know what pink? You know what the pink sprite beat sound like to me? What? Sure. Sound like a Timbaland beat. Mm. I, I don't know if you hear that, but it's it yeah. Timbaland like that's, sound to it. Word. That's in my. Uh, I did a list earlier this year in my top five producers, and that's kind of what I got. That's kind of how I felt to it. It was like the. That show you right that Timberland song yeah. with yeah with Aaliyah. I don't know exactly what you're no, about. No, no, it, that's it why I like it. That bounce. It definitely had that mm -hmm. bounce, and you sound like you're you sound like you're comfortable in both doing those styles. But just listening to when you're doing that, it's like damn, it's like you really know how to like create like the atmosphere. You know, like I feel like a lot of people they hear like artists that create like ask like astra um like atmospheric music, but they don't know how to actually capture it themselves. I feel like you do a very mm -hmm. good job making me feel like you know what i'm saying like for example like like the colors album it's like you i don't know you correct me if i'm wrong but i assume that yeah. album is based off of the names of the songs like blue like the, the song mm -hmm. sound blue is is that what that yeah. that is yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it was the soundscape i wanted to i really name each song listen to them over and over and really try to see what color i felt honestly or what color could be described this song the best way are you a that's person? why some of them is like green then it's like lime green yeah or emerald because you know green is one of my favorite colors and i feel like green kind of defied you know a lot of on the sandscape just from greed to fucking grass and fucking money you feel me and weed so like i said you know shit like that. silver probably one of my favorite songs on the album um when you mm -hmm. think of silver and you think of music like or when you think of silver, like what do you think about? Because you said when you think of green, you think of mm. like grass and stuff. Fucking, uh, fucking silver surfer. That's what I felt like. That beat felt like I was silver surfer, like from Fantastic Four. That's what I felt. I felt silver. It felt chromatic, like it was in the future. Bam in the chat. That it just sounds electric, bro. It's, it's like a chrome motorcycle. You feel me? It's electric. It's just, you know. It's just fine. I feel like some people understand it. No, for sure. I mean, because like when you hear music, I know Pharrell says he has this. Like when you hear music, do you see colors in general? Or is that, did you put yourself in a spot where you kind of made yourself see the colors in those sounds? Uh, I mean, I put myself in that point that I made it outside of body. Like when I usually, I don't literally see it. I usually type of feel them. Or it's not like, it's something that's just so, subconscious and just active in my head it just happened 
Mm-hmm. So that's what kind of helps produce the music because I see something, I feel something in it, you know. But that album, I kind of wanted to represent, you know, show show them, you know, this is what I can do. And I just wanted to be more creative, you know, because motherfuckers ain't like creativity, bro. Like, I really, growing up, I really looked up to Kanye. Of course, one of my favorite albums is My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. So, you know, you know, ever since that album, just that's how I wanted to structure my albums. I wanted to just... I wanted to be more about just a song, but like the whole thing, you know. And I feel like yeah, it'll be it'll be appreciated more if it's like that. Then you just got a song that you like and it's a bunch of bullshit. No, this is why I said I would sleep on you because I feel like it's refreshing to hear some of the stuff that you're doing. And mm-hmm. to be in rap, there's so much like like everybody want to sound like the next nigga. Do you know how many niggas I've heard? make Lil Dirk type songs. I don't know if I can hear another nigga sing like exactly like Little Dirk. I've heard at least 300 niggas. That's like every time a nigga make his first song, he gonna go in that bit <laughs> I just really got, got my, nigga my neck each. Like bro, I don't want to hear this anymore, bro. Now you talk about somebody else or something. God, like what? I just spun a block on my eyes, nigga. I making my head hurt. It's like, bro, I don't care. <laughs> I just spun a block on the house, it's making my head hurt. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm about to take that shit, <laughs> <laughs> bro. I don't know how many times I can hear a nigga say That's that. Hilarious. Oh my god! Like, I gotta thank you, nigga, for doing something different. You know what I'm saying, brother? Coolest sure. thing. I'm surprised I haven't seen. I'm pretty sure maybe somebody has done that, but I'm, I'm mm-hmm. you're the first person I've ever seen do the whole color album where like every single song sounds like this. Like I said, there may be somebody mm-hmm. else who did it, but I just never seen somebody do that. So it's refreshing to see people do different things. Yeah, I think somebody may have done like name a bunch of songs after colors, but to the music that describes the color yeah. is the same way. I don't think that's been done. Actually, I don't think that's been done. To be honest, damn near like a scratch and sniff out like every song. Yeah, yeah, damn, shit, that would be crazy. Like that a physical, be that'd be wild. It's almost that's like uh, I remember I used to get like magazines back in the day and like they had like mm-hmm. one or whatever, and you could smell mm-hmm. it. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't even know how they did that. That was wild. <laughs> but yeah, man, you might have to do something like that. My uh, my homie right, put it in the vinyl. Exactly, my homie who I think I think you guys I think you follow him on Twitter. Uh, mm. he, he told me to he had a question for you because he said you was the first person that he ever seen drop a I guess you dropped an album and along with the album you were dropping edibles with the album oh damn he went back with it boy yeah I didn't did so much crazy shit this is Nate number 8 by the way I don't know if you know that that name uh, Nate that's my guy yeah 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 we, we, we Jacksonville dudes but um yeah yeah, he, yeah, I did that, bro. I yeah. did that with the homie from Shoreline Mafia, matter of fact. Yeah. Master Kato. Yeah, before he was in Shoreline Mafia. Fucking, it's an album. He owned this, like, this company called Golden Valley. And I um, I was like, we was homies. So I was like, let me get down. Let's do a, a project, bro. Let's do a project. And let's name it Big Baby Valley. And let's drop some fucking cookies with it. It's like as merch or at the album. Like, we just you would just ship them out from your bakery. Because he lived in California, so he could handle it. And or he was sometimes he shipped me like fifty of them. And I shipped them off myself, mm. and we called them big baby bookies. And it was like red velvet cookies, and it was like how to draw. Yeah, it was a, it was that was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm about to drop a video game, man. Maybe I seen that video game. I seen that. I, I seen that on your Twitter. You were like, uh, was, was that, with the little video you tweeted out? Was that a snippet of, of the video game? Like yeah, actual snippet mm-hmm. of- yeah, it's different levels. What's the objective? Uh, so each different level, um, you fight a different boss on a different, uh, basically landscape. And it just kind of goes into the Baby Five album and the kind of commercials that we're planning to doing and still rolling out for the shit. And it just goes hand in hand. But each level is like kind of shit that I like to do and things that I like. Like one level, you're in the kitchen and like, um, fighting through the kitchen, uh, missing burners, toasters, forks and shit dropping on you, whatever. And the boss at the end is like Gaffieri. And then it's like, um, fucking, um, it's another one, like a Dune, because I'm really obsessed with Dune. I love Dune. I love movies. And at the end, it's like a giant worm. It's another one. It's like Jeopardy. It's like Steve Harvey at the end. Yeah, it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of different, it's a bunch of different shit, but 
you basically just get to the end, you try to collect coins, and you got them. You try to win enough coins to just beat the boss or whatever, and you get you get like secret shit after like yeah. each level that you beat. And it's gonna be on physical Game Boy. It's gonna be on a website, but it's also gonna be like collectors physical Game Boy cartridges. Yeah. You know, if you actually if you got a Game Boy, you can actually play that bitch on an actual Game Boy. It's gonna be fire. A couple things. One, that's hard. That's that's <laughs> hard, nigga. I'm I'm like damn buy me a Game Boy just to buy that. You know what I'm saying? That's oh God, hard. I'm gonna have to. That's hard. One. Two, uh, you brought up Dune. It's funny because I thought that movie looked so boring. And up mm. until recently, you know who made me watch that movie? Uh, Rob Banks. Uh, he was uh, he was telling me it was like a really good movie. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna watch it. And that is a really good movie. I still haven't seen two yet, but I do like Dune. Dune is Dune. Two is, is it? That's it. when I watched the first Dune probably like six, seven times, and I fucking hated it. I'm like, stop trying to get me to watch this movie, bro. It's not. It's not happening. And then one day I just watched it by myself, and it was it. But Dune two is incredible, bro. It's even better. No, that's, no, I definitely got to watch too. Um, and you said Guy Fieri. I, I have to read yeah, it because yeah, yeah. I've been laughing. I don't know if you've seen that video of the guy who bought the guy who was at the Guy Fieri restaurant. He was very angry. Mm -hmm. You see, this? <laughs> there's like a video of a guy at Guy Fieri restaurant. And I guess he bought two chicken sandwiches and two waters and it came up to $70. What the fuck? He was so mad. He, he was like, and he found like a cardboard cutout of Guy Fieri in his restaurant. He was like, hey, mm. fat fuck, fuck you. And he just kept <laughs> saying it. I gotta go watch that shit. I, I'm gonna say that's the funniest video on the internet right now. But uh, but no, that game sounds interesting. Mm. I, I was I was because I seen you talking about the I seen you posting about the game, and then I also seen you talking about how you think college football is probably ass this year. Uh, 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 uh. Haven't played that yet. I still got. I still got to play that. Um, are you a gamer? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So I um I run a little. I, I'm in the middle of still creating my own little gaming company. It's called BTG. I had a Warzone uh tournament not too long. I paid one. I used to stream a lot on Twitch, shit like that. I just been on the road and doing shit. I gotta get my shit back together on the Twitch shit. But hell yeah, I'll be on definitely. Definitely should, be gaming a lot. I should have knew that because I think you said that like. Weren't you recording your music off of like an Xbox mic once upon a time? Yep, that's how I started. Uh, so you're an Xbox guy? No, I'm a PlayStation guy. I'm just at the time, that's all I had. I thought you was a real nigga, man. That's crazy, man. Ah, uh, that's fucked up. I thought you was a real nigga for a second, man. <laughs> that's fucked up. That's funny. Um, but no, what, like, are you playing anything right now? Our last thing you played? Uh, I've been playing on the Switch. I've been playing uh, Final Fantasy Crisis Core. Shit fire as fuck. Um, Pokemon Violet's cool. I mean, I, I got into Rocket League more, but on the PlayStation, um, I got college football. College football is cool now. The shit's broken though, but it's all right. Um, Warzone, of course. Two K, of course. Um, fucking Ghost of Tsushima. Cyberpunk. A couple of. I got fucking Elden Ring, but I ain't I ain't play too much. It's so hard. But man, there's a couple games on the plan. I quit Cyberpunk. Like I was playing Cyberpunk, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I don't know. It just, I don't know. Like I kept getting killed by like I haven't played so long. Like, I think it was just like, aren't there like they're like robots or like the cameras mm -hmm. or something like that? And I was like, mm -hmm. bro, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I, I think I couldn't get past the mission. I just quit Cyberpunk. Did you beat right. it? Nah, nah, I didn't. Hey, you got an online mode. That's pretty cool. I hear it's good. Like I like I hear it's good. I just I was like, bro, I'm done with this game. Elden Ring played a uh, Dark Souls, and like I know, like Dark Souls, not Elden Ring, but like yeah, I know a lot of people are playing Elden Ring right now. And uh, yeah, Dark. Have you played Dark Souls? I uh, I used to play, but I didn't. That was one of the games when I was a kid that scared the shit out of me. So I, <laughs> you know, I couldn't play it that much. Like I used to only could play it because I was over my brother's friend's house and shit like that. And that it wasn't a game my mom would buy. First time I heard it, I think my uh I was in high school and this nigga was just like, bro, it's the hardest game of all time. Da, da, da. I'm like, all right. Sure. Played it and I was like, all right, this shit is incredibly difficult, nigga. I can't yeah, what the fuck? Nigga, what? They don't give you no instructions. Just here. Hey, just go. go out. 
go, bro. You know what I'm saying? Fight, nigga. You finna fight this 12 foot nigga. Go fight him. It's like, bro, what? Oh, God. So, yeah. There ain't no boss modes, nigga. Everybody's a boss. That's Everybody a boss. Oh, God. That's shit. Elder, hey, Elden Ring is insane. Elden Ring is crazy. similar, right? It's the same shit, bro. When I say you literally just go in, I was stuck on that first part for like three hours, dog. I'm like, man. I stopped playing. I ain't played it in a couple months. Do you? Could you imagine making like a song that sounds like Elden Ring or like Dark Souls? Like, is that is that a thing you? Mm. Ever... I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I haven't really related games to my music yet. I guess sounds, but I don't know. I guess it would be on some hard ass shit. <laughs> I don't know. Some clams casino type shit, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's another person who makes an atmosphere. Yeah, that's another nigga who could like capture an atmosphere. That's my guy, bro. He fucks with me. Really? I, uh, I, yeah, and I have sampled his shit. He stamped. He, I sampled it and remixed the shit. Actually, my homie did. Mm. He stamped it. He said. He said he fucked with it. Man, shout out to cool. Clams Casino. No, I, I think okay. it would be an interesting concept for you to. I don't know if it'd be an EP or whatever, but just like make something like influenced off an of album, similar to like colors. Because if somebody like I, like I said, I know you're into games and. People who play games usually get influenced by games, like rather mm -hmm. you know, you you know what I mean. So yeah, I sure. think it's an interesting concept for sure. Definitely a lot of niggas I think will flock to that for sure. Big fact. That's super duper interesting. Um, but yeah, like I said, just your your music, man. You really know how to create an atmosphere, like even something like temporary. Like temporary sounds like I'm doing like cocaine and like a skating ring, like. You know what I'm saying? Like, my boy said, okay, for real. Nah, that's the type of vibes I want, though. With that, uh, uh, dun, dun, dun. you got it. Really, it's really just the music. I feel like I just want to make some time. Shit, shit, damn near time. I feel like, no, it, this this album has a lot of things that I can see like standing within its standing with the test of time. And I know you said that you worked on this for a long time, right? Like nine months straight, just taking songs off. Putting yeah, it as long as I ever, you know, longest, you know. It's, it could be a good or bad thing to that chase and perfection, but I mean, all in all, I feel like I I came out with a good body of work. You know, how does it feel like after actually putting it out after working on it for so long? Man, that shit still feel crazy. I just made a post before this, before I got on the interview. I'm like, man, I still can't believe it's out. Like, I was the longest I ever. I ain't never even really thought about working on something that long. I mean, it was some life shit ahead too, and then got into, you know, some other shit. So it was like, I had to put it together the way the best I could. And then at the ending, it was shit going left and right. Oh, I had to change this song. Or I had to take this melody off of this because this producer or oh, this artist ended up using this sample on it. And like, it was crazy, bro. Then I, I changed that the album cover, like, I think like five days before it dropped, the label was like, you tweaking. <laughs> but it, it was like, I had to change it. And, but it turned out good. What up? Speaking of tweaking, kind of like fusion this album with real life. I know you said like you don't. Are you you're not like a people's person? I think I heard you said in an interview one time, correct? What you mean? I think you said like you don't really like people like that. Oh no, nah, I don't. I guess everybody say that. I guess, honestly, if you probably ask my friends or some shit about this, they know I'm an outgoing person, but they probably would say I don't. I don't fuck with people. So I bring it up because on Instagram. Uh, what you say? Uh, label say I need to speak, like you know, like like like. Oh, like yeah. I don't want to mm -hmm. tweet or whatever. So like oh, in, being in like the music industry, have you felt that you've been held back by not being such a people's person? Or yeah, you, you think so? Yeah, I was. I had this conversation the other day with my girl and my homie. Like, it ain't really hindered me, but I feel like if I was, if I would have been, you know, if I was more friendly, rub more elbows and I took more Instagram pictures out of these motherfuckers more or when I was around some some lit motherfuckers like niggas always doing taking pictures and shit you know or at least being buddy buddy and shit you know you know but that just wasn't me you know so it was just it, I could have got more opportunity out of it but I'm here and yeah. I didn't do that shit so fuck it I mean I'm more I mean I'm older now and I know how to I know how the business going I know how to I know how to mingle with Pretty much every type of personality there is. So, and, and me, I'm I'm outgoing. I'm pretty cool. Like I don't I get along with anybody. So it's not like I'm just you know. I just like to you know be in my own bubble. That's yeah. how I am. No, for sure. Really. I, I've been I've been interviewing a few North Carolina news recently, um, and I've all asked them the same question. Um, 
growing up in North Carolina, is South Carolina more country? Hell yes. Like we in North Carolina, it's some people that ain't even seen a far river. Mm. But in South Carolina, it's hella. You probably grew up on a farm down the street from a farm. You smell that shit all the time. Charlotte, Charlotte, Raleigh, dorm, all these college towns and cities yeah. and shit like that. Like this country is hell, but we ain't really. They not li- really live in the country like like what yeah. people think. Mm. But it's they and they don't go to them outside cities to see it at all either because it's, mm. it's hella farms out there too. Like I I didn't live in Gastonia for a minute, and um, it's like this this little town that's outside of Charlotte or whatever. Like North Gaston, all this shit. Where right? you should smell that shit all the time. One of my favorite people on uh, the internet right now, I forget his name off the top of my head, but he be making like the most insane stuff. He's from South Carolina. I think he, he made a, a snake donut burger. I don't know if you've seen this video or not. Yo, I did. He be like, yeah, I'm about to grill a python. Now that's, that's good cooking right there. I hear you say, well, that's hey, bro, goodies. funny as hell. <laughs> that's yeah, some goodies. <laughs> that python right there. Yeah, that 12, it's 12 foot python. We done smoked it. We done fried it in the golden, whatever you saying, the golden glaze, what the fuck. Bro, funny as hell. Oh, that's he not he's not a real person. That's the country's nigga ever, bro. Only a country had nigga say that's some good eating right here, boy. That's some good eating. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> all right, nigga, we are not slaves no more. Oh my bro, that nigga the closest thing we got to a slave. That nigga, I seen him, bro. I seen him deep fry some some raccoon. And oh my god. He would like, he would like, well, I got I got macoon right here. He said, I got a better rice right here. Ooh, but it's some good eating right here. <laughs> Hell no, bro. Sweet. He fried the raccoon. He he said he has he made some coon stew. Coon yeah. stew. He stay stewing that shit. He yeah yeah. After after he done fried it and dipped it and smoked it, he has, he has stew it at the end. That nigga stay doing that shit. That's how you know he country because he be repurposing shit. Like he ain't just about to cook this shit. He about to <laughs> make that shit in three different meals. Boy, that nigga. That, I don't see that nigga made bear legs like that nigga. Boy, he see an animal. You know what? Yeah. Was bare legs. What part of California? I mean, I do not know what part of South Carolina. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I bring it up to say, so you being a North Carolina native, does this sound tasty to you? Like, is this is this you hear? Hell no. Like, do your stomach start bubbling when you hear coon stew? Hell no. I swear to God, I can't make coon stew. I go on TikTok. I go on TikTok. It's the first thing I see is this nigga. I I didn't even I didn't even curse his name. He's the first nigga I see. That's how you know hey, I watch this nigga too much. Let me see where he from. Bernard. Where, where is bruh from? Bruh is from South Carolina. I don't say. He from somewhere out there, though. Mm. Let me go on his Facebook. He seemed like a nigga that had it on mm. Facebook. Yeah, bruh from Columbia. Six. Columbia, South Carolina. Damn, that ain't even that country. That's one of the biggest cities there. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's, that's how country South Carolina is. That the even biggest, the biggest city like that. <laughs> and we're up there got them freaked out i wonder what they're doing in the sticks Goodness they anything that is funny um well hey uh before we get out of here i, I do want to touch on one more thing because i was yep. going to twitter and, and and i was looking at some of your tweets and i seen you say a couple times that either twitter was incredibly racist or texas was really racist so I just wanted to get both parts on what did you see on Twitter where you was like, nigga, this is ridiculous. And what happened in Texas where you was like, this is crazy? Uh, fuck. I was saying, I said Twitter was racist because I literally, I have fucking, I don't know. I just said, I've seen some posts and of course it was probably some black person that they found that they cherry picked the video of. They probably fighting and it's like, it was like so many comments under like anonymous fucking white people just saying fucked up shit. And it's like, bro, and everybody just agreeing with each other. Everybody, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, this is not real times, bro. It just felt weird as fuck. And I'm like, how is this shit even possible? Like, how can like, this nigga Elon weird as fuck? I was like, Elon, like, what's on Twitter, bro? Yeah, I, I go on Twitter and I see like, a, a caricature of like a black person with like big lips and like and eat fried chicken. Like, what is this, bro? Why is this on my timeline? This is insane. Shit is really disrespectful, bro. Like, and the motherfuckers think it's he, he funny, bro. I'm like, yeah, nah, bro. We're not fucking 18, 17 no more. Shit weird, but I mean, in Texas, now my girl was like sit beside some uh some folks, 
And bro ass was like, she had like had her arm on the chair or whatever, and the nigga got down. He just starts sitting up in the aisle for like 30 minutes. Like he ain't even want to be touched. Like, nigga. Mm. He don't want to touch you, boy. Calm down. And then at first, I guess his wife was sitting there and they switched seats. Just on some weird shit. Like, what the fuck is the purpose? Where, where was that in Texas? This is on a flight to Texas. Flight to Texas going to Dallas? I was, yeah, no, to Houston. Houston. Mm hmm. That's crazy. It, would you say growing up in North Carolina was like, was there a lot of racism you experienced out there? Uh, hell yeah, it was hella racism, but North Carolina's kind of, it's very Christian. So they were real quiet about their racism, unless, you know, but it's definitely still a shit ton of racism. I honestly ain't. It, I'm so used to it, I can't even point it out. I can't even point out a time like, hey, man, that shit was, because it's like, it's just microaggression daily. Yeah. You know? Hey, man. And that's the shit that they understand. As you said on Twitter, man, it's we, it's either you or V's that's going to save the world, man. You know what I'm saying, bro? It's <laughs> all two niggas, bro. Oh, it's yeah. It's in y'all. Working man. overtime. It is a y'all hand. Um, but no, but before we get out of here, if there's any lads words you want to say to the people, man, uh, let it be known. Shit, uh, man, baby five out now. New PM 108, anti. That's it. Hey, for everybody watching, I appreciate y'all. Until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters gonna hate, players gonna play, and y'all holler at your boy.